Welcome to Maths with Wong. Today we're starting the IB um, series on binomial expansion. Well, binomial expansion is really just FOIL, something that you learn earlier in grade nine, grade 10. So you say, well, what's the big deal in grade 12? Well, what we're gonna talk about today is, is there a shortcut if I wanna expand something like this, a plus B to the power of 10? We don't wanna do it step by step, is there a shortcut? Is there a faster way of getting to the answer? Well, let's take a look and see if there's any patterns, right? We have a plus b to the power of one. And when you have a plus b to the power of one, it's like you have a length, it's one d and you're adding them. So that's simply equal to a plus b. If you have an area where the side length is a and b, then when you multiply them, you're gonna get an A squared term, you're gonna have an AB, another AB term, and then you have a B squared. And there you go, binomial expansion back in grade nine and 10, A squared plus two AB plus B squared. Uh, what about 3D? Well, if you have A plus B multiplied by itself to the power of three, we can slowly expand them by doing what we did multiplying this area by the length. We know this is a squared plus two AB plus B squared. And now we have to multiply this by A plus B. So FOIL again, you're gonna get a cube plus three A squared B plus three AB squared plus B cubed. And you say, well, that's okay, but I don't want to do this for to the power of five, to the power of 10. So is there a pattern? That's what we want to see. So let me list them out and see if there's a pattern. We know A plus B to the power of one, it's just one A and one B. We know that A plus B square, you're going to have A square, you're going to have two AB, and you're gonna have a B square. Similarly, to the power of three, and if you actually take the time to expand it, you have the following. And I'll do one more. What if to the power of four? And if you expand it, you're actually gonna get something that looks like this. Now, you're gonna say, is there a pattern? Well, let's take a look at the coefficients of all those expansions. I have a one and a one. I have a one, a two, and a one. I have a one, a three, a three, and a one. A one, four, six, four, and a one. Now, you probably are able to follow the pattern and figure out uh, the next term down there. You know, the first one is probably going to be 1 a to the power of 5. And the last one is probably going to be 1 b to the power of 5. Now, what about all the ones in between? Well, it seems like I'm going from one and then to two and then to three and then to four. So the next one's probably going to be five. And if you see, you see how the variables A goes down from three to two to one to zero, four to three to two to one to zero. You're going to expect the next one is going to go from five to four to three. No, actually, let me move it over a little bit. Right, so you see how four goes to three to two to one to zero. So I'm gonna go from five to four to three to two to one to zero. 
What happened to the letter B? Well, it goes the other way around. So you go from zero to one to two to three to four. So here I'm going from zero to one to two to three to four to five, right? The problem is what well, what goes in here? What's the coefficient? Well, what's the coefficient is the famous Pascal's triangle. You see the one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. How do I come up with the next row? Well, what you do is you add. So one and one becomes a two, one and two becomes a three, two and one becomes a three, one and three becomes a four, three and three becomes six, three and one becomes a four. So the next one is one and four, which give you the five, four and six, which give you the 10, six and four, which gives you the 10, four and one, which gives you the five. So that's how you can expand the next one, which is a plus b to the power of five. There are a total of six terms. The first term is you have one, a to the power of five, b to the power of zero. The second term, it's gonna be five times a to the power of four, b to the power of one, right? As you can see, the powers always add up to five. Five and zero, four and one, three and two, two and three, one and four, and five and zero. They all add up to five. Now, you may still see, well, if I want to find the 10th row, does it mean I have to, you know, do the first nine? Well, there is actually a magic formula, which we call binomial theorem. And we have used the notation of permutations and combinations. So here, this notation is called n choose r. It's factorial notation, n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial, which you can use on the calculator, or you can solve by hand. So what five chooses one, for example, is equal to five factorial over one factorial times four factorial. And that's gonna give you five. If you wanna do five choose two, that's gonna be five factorial over two factorial, three factorial, and that's gonna give you 10. So another way of writing one five 10, 10, 5, 1 is using the notation of factorials. This is 5 choose 0. That's 5 choose 1. This is 5 choose 2. That's 5 choose 3. This is 5 choose 4. And the last one is 5 choose 5. And the general term then for any particular term here we're talking about can be simply referred to this magic formula where n is the power on the outside and r is a particular term that you want. It's the power on the letter b. So the general term is n choose r bracket, a raised to the power of n minus r b raised to the power of r. Well, let me show you how to use the formula. So here's the first example, and you ask to expand 2x plus 1 to the power of 5. Well, you know there are six terms, and the coefficients are 5 choose 0. Right, I'm going to write it vertically just so that I have a bit more space. 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2, 5 choose 3, five choose four and five choose five are the coefficients of the six different terms. Then I'm going to have a to the power of n minus r, so it's five, b to the power of zero, right? Five of a and one, zero of b. The second term is going to be a to the power of four n minus r, five minus one is four, and b to the power of one, whatever the value of r is. The next term, a to the power of n minus r, b to the power of r. a to the power of n minus r, b to the power of r. a to the power of n minus r, 
b to the power of r, and lastly, a to the power of n minus r, which is zero, b to the power of r, which is five. So you see how those are the five or six different terms that we're gonna have. And you can actually expand it and find out what each of those terms are. So here, that's a one, this is a one, two x to the power of five, which is 32 x to the power of five plus here, that's 16, 16 times five is gonna be 80. So that's 80 x to the power of four. This next term is two to the power of three, that's eight. Eight times 10 is also 80, 80 x to the power of three. This is 10, 10 times four, so that's 40 x squared. Here, that's a five times a two, that's 10 x. And then the last term is a one. So this would be the expansion for 2x plus 1 to the power of 5. 32x to the power of 5 plus 80x to the power of 4 plus 80x to the power of 3 plus 40x squared plus 10x plus 1. Right? Now, some questions, they're not going to ask you to expand the whole thing. They may ask for a particular term in the expansion. Anytime they're looking for the third term, a lot of people think, well, does that mean r equal to 3? That's the most common mistake in this kind of question, right? The answer is no, because the first term is always choosing zero. So the third term is not choosing three. The third term is always choosing two. So first term, second term, third term. This is the one that I'm looking for, right? Keep in mind, it's always starting at zero. So the third term, r is equal to 2. So here, knowing that r is equal to 2, I just need to look and say 3, choose 2, a to the power of n minus r, b, now make sure you include a negative sign in b, to the power of r. What's 3 choose 2? 3 choose 2, punching the calculator, is just 3. Here is 3x to the power of 1. Here's negative 2y to the power of 2, so we get 4y squared. Multiply and, uh, uh, well, simplify here. You get 36xy squared. And that would be the third term in the expansion of this particular binomial. Okay, let's do one more example. Find the seventh term of 3x minus 4 over x squared to the power of 14. Well, the seventh term means r is equal to 6. n is 14. So this is 14 to 6, which means a, 3x, raised to the power of n minus r, 14 minus 6. And b, which is, again, include a negative sign, negative 4 over x squared, raised to the power of r. Combine all the coefficients together, 14 over six, three raised to the power of eight, negative four raised to the power of six. Now combining the variables together, I have x to the power of eight, multiplied by one over x squared or x to the power of negative two to the power of six. Now the coefficient is gonna be big, if the question did not ask you to simplify, you can leave the answer as a big kind of like expression like this, but you should always combine the variable. So this is x to the power of 8, x to the power of negative 12, which is going to get x to the power of negative 4. Now, if you punch in the calculator, this is actually a very big number. This is 8.07 times 10 to the power of 10. Right? So that's how you figure out a particular term in a binomial expansion using the binomial theorem. Thank you for watching.